six feet end to end, three and five tenths feet central diameter, tapering to one foot at each end, like a barrel with five bulging ridges in place of staves. Lateral breakage, as of finished stocks, are at equator in the middle of these ridges, and furrows between the ridges are curious growths, combs or wings that fold up and spread out like fans, which almost seven foot wing spread. Arrangement reminds one of certain monsters of primal myth, especially fabled elder things of the Necronomicon. This is a description of a partial headless body. This is People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos, hosted by D.B. Spitzer. You can find us at PGTTCM on, on, on the Twitter, and People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos at gmail.com, and People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos dot wordpress dot com, and People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos dot tumblr dot com, and just look for us on Podbean. We're on Podbean. We're on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. That's where we're at. That's that's, that's where we're at right now. And we're on Facebook. Check us out on Facebook. We're awesome. Welcome to People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos. I am your host, D.B. Spitzer. And today we're going to be talking about, well, the Cthulhu Mythos and aspects of it. Things that kind of relate to it. Things that remind me of stuff. And I don't know. Maybe we'll do some serious classification, talk about some what's what, where, when, who did it, but probably not. I'll probably talk about something for a little bit, get distracted, talk about something else, get excited, talk about something else, and then talk about something else and maybe get back to the original topic. Maybe not. Again, whatever, who knows. So that little bit at the front, that was about elder things. Do you know about Elder Things? Have we discussed Elder Things in the past? Elder Things. Well, the thing you need to know about Elder Things is that they are what brought life to the Earth that we live on. The planet that we live on. Earth. That's what we call it. That's what we call it. People who speak English, we call it Earth. Or Terra Firma. Anyway. So the Elder Things, also known as the Old Ones, but not the Great Old Ones, are um, aliens, extraterrestrials, uh, from the Cthulhu Mythos, the thing that we talk about all the time, uh, originally appeared in H.P. Lovecraft's stories, Dreams in the Witch House, which was just kind of more of a reference to this um, ornament, but became more fleshed out and something a little bit more uh, referenced in The Shadow Out of Time. And then finally, uh, <laughs> kind of a major part, not kind of, a major part of the novella At the Mountains of Madness. Um, so you have these elder things uh, probably just kind of like I don't know frozen in the Arctic wastes some humans find them start cutting them up and yeah I'm just just spoiler alert here uh, if you haven't read at the mountains of madness stop right now uh read Mountains of Madness, listen to it even, you know, find find an audio recording and listen to it if you don't feel like reading, you know, play video games and listen to audio recording. At least, at least become aware of what this stuff is. This stuff, all the horror stuff that you like, all the video game stuff that you like, a lot of it stems from this stuff and uh, it's important. I don't wanna just sound like someone's dad lecturing you about, you know, the importance of the Cthulhu mythos and, you know, but if I'm gonna, I will. <laughs> Anyways, so, okay. So these guys came down to Earth about 
a billion years ago. And, you know, uh, they, they stand about eight feet tall. They're big old barrel-shaped starfish things. And um, the thing is, like, I'm like, well, how, how, I don't want to sound like a jerk or anything, but how did they build stuff if they don't, and I always feel like a jerk, like, thinking, okay, so you have an alien race. How did they build things? They don't have hands like we do. And it's like, well, um, ants build things and they don't have hands like we do. But ants also don't fly through space and um, colonize worlds. Anyway, so... <laughs> You have these guys, um, they have radial symmetry instead of our bilateral symmetry, uh, very much like octopuses, which may not be from our world. Uh, Lovecraft described the Elder Things as vegetable-like or, um, yeah, and having uh, vegetable and animal characteristics, um, and I think they reproduced via spore. I can't remember where I read that. I think I read that on Wikipedia. And, um, yeah. Uh, apparently, rough skin. I've always imagined them being something um, feeling like a loofah sponge. They've always kind of reminded me of loofah sponges that someone glued starfish and wings onto. Um, their barrel shapedness, their rough. Uh, the way that their stuff is like a five-sided, just, I think, loofah sponge. Mountains of Madness, um, the, the, the great city of the Elder Things was inhabited by giant loofahs. And, yeah, that, that, that just goes back to Lovecraft's uh, underwater imagery that he just tends to use all the time, whether it be giant octopoid things or sea sponges with a star thing a starfish stuck to them fish people yeah all kinds of uh i don't know sea imagery anyway so what else do we know okay so source material we talked about that apparently the elder things had a huge 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 uh civilization on both uh, underwater and on land. And um, uh, the they, they had a slave race called the Shoggoths that then rebelled. And the rebellion was like the collapse of this empire of these elder things, at least on Earth. At one point in time, they could fly through the ether of time and space, but they became degenerate and knew to how to no longer travel through time and space or the ether of space or whichever it is. Um, they had a great city underneath the Earth, uh, all, all over the place. And... Um, uh, the Elder Things were known to have uh, warred against, like, Cthulhu's Star Spawn, and the Migo, and the great race of Yith. Um, we've, we've discussed, we've discussed the Migo, the, uh, fungoid creatures from beyond our, 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 our galaxy that, um, have an outpost at least on Pluto and mine for metals on Earth. And they like to trick hillbilly folk into doing their bidding and also are where the uh, Yeti mythos or uh, Yeti mythology comes from. Even though a furry white thing and a fungoid crab blobstrosity kind of guy don't look anything alike, so... I'm not sure what Lovecraft was thinking when it came to that one. Anyway, so let's see, where are we now? Okay, so we talked about their city. We talked about their last surface city located in Antarctica that uh, some guys from Miskatonic University found on a super great exploration of the Antarctic. Albino penguins, read the book. Have you, have you not read this book? Please read this book. Stop 
again, if, if you've if you haven't read this and you're listening still, just stop it. Go read it. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, what else can I tell you about the uh, the uh, Elder Things? Did you know they created all life on Earth when they were creating their slave race, the Shoggoths? All life on Earth? Elder Things created it. Kind of like uh, when they were creating Shoggoths, like bits and pieces that didn't work while trying to create shoggoths became rudimentary life as we know it. That rudimentary life later evolved into us. Elder Things had no intention of creating life as we know it, but they did. And that's why human life is so precious in Lovecrafts. No, it's not precious at all. So rare. It's You don't see like aliens coming down looking like us you don't see any of that in this lovecraftian stuff it's it's pretty much accepted that we are the byproduct of shoggoth creation and that our meaningless existence is uh is i don't know it's 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 because of shoggoths and that's why shoggoths when they like blurp and blabble and squirp and squamp all over the place why it's like eyes and noses and mouths of recognizable type stuff and because you know they're us we're them we're 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 of the same uh <laughs> we're not the same point evolutionary we're not even the same like uh same same species but we are of the same matter unlike everything else in the universe fun stuff <laughs> all right enough about shoga so we'll talk about them some other time um so where uh where are these elder things now do they still are, are they still around well some people say yes um in other source material other stuff people went back and there was nothing found at uh antarctica but what about deep, deep, deep within Antarctica? What about some unforgotten, uh, un unforgotten area? You know, those guys could still be hanging out. Those, those scientists and artists, and they were men like us. What your face? They were men. I, was that the big shocker? No, that wasn't the big shocker line at the end of uh, the Mountains of Madness. It was, it was one of those things, though. Ah. The thing is that they're just like us. We're just like them. That's not a line, but anyway. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, if you were running a game, if you were creating a game, if you were writing a story, how could someone, a modern person, find an elder thing? Well, there's like hackney stuff like time travel they perfected time travel uh, before their race degenerated or they used space-time magic um, not like Alistair Crowley 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 oh I can't remember the rhyme to remember which one I was going to make a joke about sex magic but space-time magic for elder things that's one way to do it. Uh, what about uh, Unforgotten Colony? Unforgotten Colony. Hey, that's a great one. What about the North Pole? Is there anything uh, under the water? Is there anything under the water? Is there anything uh, like way, way, way underneath? Deep, 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 deep frozen. Is there, you know, it's you know different hollow earth hollow earth there's one for you there right there how how could there be elder things hollow earth there you go right there hollow earth hollow earth uh gaslight era expedition hollow earth you can have all kinds of things fighting an eternal war inside of the earth great race of yith star spawn well maybe not star spawn what about um, the, uh, oh goodness, what were the Mamajamas who fought the great race of Yith? Um, 
Uh, the Eldritch um, Blood Clots? No, uh, Flying Polyps. Flying Polyps. Yeah, there we go. Uh, flying Polyps and the Great Race of Yith and Degenerate Elder Things. Or maybe maybe the Elder Things have, uh, you know, what, what if, like, whatever was in Antarctica was, like, I don't know, a ghost town version. And uh, it, it was just maybe those guys that had the really, really bad problems with Shoggoths and everyone else is just like, oh, we're just going to go back. We ran out of stuff here. It's not that great. There's Shoggoths everywhere. We're, we're, there's way too much. I don't know. Uh, this like animal life stuff. Oops. We, we destroyed, we destroyed this place. Let's get out of here before it gets too bad. So yeah, that's Elder Things for you. Um, have Elder Things appeared in anything besides um, at the Mountains of Madness? Of course, there's been Elder Things in uh, the role-playing game, of course. Uh, not just Call of Cthulhu, but you can also run across Elder Things in uh, Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and stuff like that. One of the earliest memories I have of Elder Things is not knowing what they were, but there was that book, uh, Guide to Extraterrestrials. Let me uh, punch that up. Uh, Guide to Extraterrestrials. Borrow's Guide to Extraterrestrials had a really great picture of, whoop, there it is right there. A uh, really great picture based off Lovecraft's description of, uh, they call them old ones, not elder things. Anyway, pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> Borrow's Guide. I remember that in, uh, what was it? Probably about like fourth or fifth grade. I don't know what year it came out, but just really, 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 really digging that book a lot. I think a lot of kids really dug that book. Um, what year did it came out? It came out in 1979. Okay, cool. Uh, Hugo Award for Best Related Borrows Guide. I gotta write this down so I remember to put this in show notes. Uh, Barlow's Guide. Sorry, yeah. People probably screaming at me on their side of the, uh, Barlow's Guide. Anyway, yeah, no, Barlow's Guide. Great thing. Kind of went on to, uh, inspire a lot of people to do a lot of other stuff like that. I can't recall if uh, did someone inspire uh, Wayne Barlow with Ian Summers and Beth Meacham who provided text uh, such as Roger Troy Peterson's Guide to Birds in North America. Yeah, no, okay, I get it. Uh, Peterson Guides, uh, Sandy Peterson did Peterson Guides for Call of Cthulhu, and then someone else did Peterson Guides for uh, Shadowrun. I believe there was Sh uh, You know what? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, the, go to the Shadowrun podcast for that stuff. They'll, they'll tell you. Uh, I don't know of a Shadowrun podcast, but if you do... Let me know. I miss Shadowrun. Shadowrun was fun. That's one thing I like about listening to Harmontown. Get to listen to people play Shadowrun. Especially Curtis Armstrong from Revenge of the Nerds. Playing a uh, troll doctor. Pretty cool stuff. Plus, Curtis Armstrong, National Treasure.
time. Um, yeah, I, sorry if I spam too much. I'm trying not to be a jerk. So, let's, uh, let's talk about some video games there. Um, because what else have I been doing that I could really talk about? Um, video games? So, what I have been playing a lot of and checking out playthroughs, because when I can't sleep at night, I like to listen to podcasts, sketch and draw, and play video games. And I love Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas, I think, is probably my favorite video game of the last few years. But it gets a little boring at times, so I will sometimes put in something that will replace all kinds of stuff. And one of those replacers, game replacers, turns it into a brand new game is called Fallout Dust. You can go to, and um, if you have a console, <laughs> sorry, but this is a mod. This is a mod for a PC, um, or in my case, a Macintosh that has been tricked into thinking it's a PC for the sole purpose of playing Fallout. And uh, yeah, I've been playing Fallout Dust you start out in roughly what would be the Legion safe house. And you have to find your way out of the Mojave. There's a fair amount of lore involved. You, uh, there's ton, okay. So the basic premise is say the courier was a bad guy. Say, say if you played Fallout as a bad guy and did all the bad guy stuff, what would the Mojave look like if you were just some random person who got stuck in the Mojave 20 years later, and that's what dust is. There's tunnelers from one DLC, there's ghost people from another DLC. You can escape to one particular DLC and find how it's destroyed. And another DLC, I think you, uh, I think you gather up a bunch of C4, blast out a train tunnel, and end up in another train tunnel and another DLC. But it rearranges things, it makes things different, it takes stuff out and puts stuff in. I swear every place that there is a rad scorpion, they switch it out with a ghoul. And every place that there's a gecko, they switch out tunnelers from one of the DLCs. It's a bit scary. Uh, all people are replaced with cannibals and terrible people, uh, raiders and such. The NCR is just on a basic, just wipe everything out mission uh, for the Mojave. And yeah, yeah, the Legion fell apart and is now a bunch of different roaming gangs and tribes and ugh, it's, it's tough. It's rough. I really highly recommend it. I recommend that you find all the different downloads for it. I recommend that you play it on hardcore mode and then stop like I did and then go back to others. And here's another one. This is really weird. Okay, I recommend that you start a character in Dust, step outside, and then turn Dust off. You'll have weird tunnelers. Doc Mitchell will act weird. You'll get weird people acting weird and you'll end up with more enemies and people, just random people that are hostile to you if you do it like that. And apparently there is a big boat out in the middle of, uh, oh man, I'm trying to remember. It's kind of out by Hoover Dam. It's um, uh, Lake Mead, Hoover Dam area, and it's a capsized boat that has a big trunk full of Chet's possessions in it. Pretty cool. And there's one called, uh, a mod called Understone that adds in a friendly city. I highly recommend that one. Um, otherwise, it's a brutal, brutal, brutal game. There's like, I don't think there's any rat away. Uh, you can go insane very much like Call of Cthulhu. If you eat human flesh, if you shoot an innocent person, if any of that stuff happens, uh, you go insane. I highly recommend picking up Dust. Um, and the way that you pick it up is you just download it from 
uh, Nexus Mods, I believe. And if you don't know how to install a mod for Fallout or any game like that, you can um, look 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 for videos on YouTube, and they will definitely tell you how to set up a mod. What I found out is no one had videos at the time when I tried to install Fallout 3 onto a Macintosh. There weren't any, so I had to figure out by using various methods how to cobble together a way to play Fallout 3 <laughs> on a on a Mac. Uh, what other games do I have set up? I have Sheltered. Sheltered is kind of like, um, oh, oh wow, it's a roguelike. People describe it as a roguelike, and I'm like, I don't know if I would say that. Uh, it's got kind of terrible graphics. It is an inventory management program where you play a family and then possibly more where you upgrade and repair various parts of your fallout shelter and you send people out into the wastelands. Now you're saying, hey, how is this different from fallout shelter? Well, you're not an overseer. It's like 8-bit graphics as opposed to uh, iPhone graphics. Everything's kind of simplistic looking. You can repair things. You set people up to give people very specific tasks. It's kind of more like, I don't know, The Sims uh, meets Post-Apocalyptia, but also kind of a um, Warcraft 2, Warcraft kind of like building system. You need to gather supplies. You send people out into the wastelands and you have them gather stuff. They fight things. There's turn-based combat. Uh, you can customize your first four characters and then meet people, upgrade things. Oh, and um, yeah, you go insane. You can you can you can go insane. Um, and oh, cannibalism. There's also cannibalism. It's it can get really dark really quick. Uh, radiation poisoning, uh, raiders, not not raiders like in Fallout, but like more like the road or Walking Dead. <sighs> I don't know if I'm excited about the next season of Walking Dead. I'm starting to feel about Walking Dead the same way that I remember feeling about Falling Skies after uh, three episodes. Be like, it, it was fun, but just doesn't do anything that's there's no real drama it's just i don't know it's kind of feels like now they just don't feel like writing anything they just feel like having people react to zombies and then react to each other but it doesn't feel like writing it feels like slogging i don't know but if you are interested in Sheltered and not interested in me talk about, um, what do you call it? Walking Dead? I uh, go to Steam, pick up Sheltered. Uh, I think it's like $15, $16 or something like that for a demo on Steam. And I'm pretty sure they, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's for the PC as well. Anyway, I haven't had a chance to play albino lullaby yet and it's on steam and i've seen the kickstarter and well i mentioned that i would like to play it on twitter and the developer sent me a link to play it for free unfortunately it's for the pc and i haven't found a workaround for it yet um but i also haven't been trying really hard i do really want to play this game and i hope albino lullaby comes out on the Mac at some point in time in the future. I really hope that. Uh, I'll, I'll look and see. I, anyway, but uh, it is, it's not bloody, it's not gory, there's no jump, jump scares, it's all like environment based, and it looks like some sort of puzzle solving game, but I can't tell if it's a puzzle solver or a platformer or what it is, but it looks amazing and has these like finger monster things and well here's here's the audio trailer for it well it's the video trailer but i just put the audio on because i like the way it sounds check this out 
I know why you killed me. And that's, that's uh, Albino Lullaby there. It looks really cool. Check it out. I think it's on Steam. Uh, I put a link to their main thing on the show notes on the WordPress. And just a quick reminder, we've got WordPress, Facebook, Twitter. We've got stuff on Podbean. And we've got, uh, you can download this on Stitcher and iTunes if you're just listening off one of the websites. Anyway, doesn't matter to me. It, it all, yeah, hey, do it. Whatever. It's all cool. All right. And what else? <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, YouTube, lately I have been watching Yippie Kaye Mr. Falcon, a semi-humorous uh, review of various games. Currently, one of the places that I check out a sheltered Let's Play to you know, maybe not die as much. And also Fallout Dust. Also, so I don't die as much. Uh, Ollie Oxen has a good one, as does Al Chess Breach. Mini a true nerd? No. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember all who has one right now. But there's a lot of cool Dust playthroughs that you can go out and check out right now. Uh, we're not talking about Dust, we're talking about Yippie Kaye, Mr. Falcon, which comes from, I think, like the TBS USA, whatever, uh, cable, afternoon, maybe even network television, uh, censoring of Die Hard. Yippie Kaye, Mr. Falcon. And who else do we have? Uh, Mr. Nightmare on YouTube, I've been watching quite a bit of at night after I get back from my walk or before I go on my walk when I walk in circles in the dark around an old abandoned elementary school Why? and listen to my spooky podcasts and true crime pro podcasts which is kind of a bad combination of listening to true crime and then horror podcasts um but I'll get to that in a moment but yeah um Mr. Nightmare, uh, expect a lot of creepy pastas, and I'm pretty sure when putting the video together, Mr. Nightmare just punches in a word into Google, grabs the Google image, and then just uh, keeps doing that for like every 12 words or something. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It does feel like that with some other people, but he's not that bad. He does find some really spooky, or they, I'm just going to say they, because I don't know how many people it is working on it, but they find some really good images and some really spooky story, and it's it's pretty good audio. I have to highly recommend it. Um, now, uh, podcasts. Here's, here's a podcast that I've liked for a while and I've never really had a chance to give a shout out to but um, Cult let's see, Cult Film Club uh, they kind of go into depth on films that you may have watched growing up if you're a certain age, these are films that you watched growing up, they played on cable a lot, didn't have a lot of uh, mainstream acceptance and kind of got stuck in a very specific shelf at uh, video stores, or if you went to the video stores that I did as a kid, they had their whole own room of cult films, whether it be uh, Lost Boys 
or Big Trouble Little China. No, not Big Trouble Little China. Um, Streets of Fire. Yeah, Streets of Fire. That's a good one that they do. Also, People Under the Stairs. They cover all kinds of cool cult films. I don't remember anyone's name right now. Um, they do like, hey, where did I see that person from? And uh, Sounds of Cult, where they talk about the actual soundtrack to the cult film. And they, they kind of analyze it and talk about it. It's semi-serious. There's a little bit of jokiness, but it's not like, how did this get made? Yeah, um, only other thing I can really tell you about them is I designed an ad for them once. Well, I designed an ad for my client who was working with them before I even started podcasting. And that's how I found out about them is I designed uh, an ad with three skeletons wearing t-shirts for them that would specifically go on their podcast or their website for their podcast. Wow, boring story. Too long. Don't listen. And and finally, uh, podcast that I've been just binge listening to, which oh, other podcasts, I'm sorry to say this, but I have. I've just been listening to Knife Point Horror by, um, who's it by? Uh, Soren uh, Narnia? I don't know if that's really his name or not, but that's really not my concern. These tales of supernatural suspense adhere to the most primal element of storytelling. A single human voice describing events exactly as it experienced them. Here you will find no entry into the thoughts of any characters other than the narrators. No standard passages of dialogue, no humor, no romance, no profanity, no extraneous gore. The story, stripped even proper titles, fills spo- <laughs> spill forward as taught. Uninterrupted confessions. Knife point horror leaves nothing but the story's riveting spine to compel and chill you to the core. Music by Kevin McLeod, Twitter at Soren Narnia. That was the description I read from iTunes, and it's very, very fitting. Um, yeah, and uh, right now there's like 32 of them dating back to 2010. Looks like there's some 2010, 2011, only two for 2012. Uh, yeah, 2013, 2014, and looks like he's back at it again. Hopefully, we'll get more, because these are really, really good horror stories. This is the kind of stuff that if I was going to have a party where people sat around and listened to horror stories, yeah, this. If I needed uh, a jumping off point for creating a scenario for Call of Cthulhu that I was just going to play for my friends and not you know, right into a mod. Yeah, this, if I was gonna, this is a great, great podcast to listen to, but also it's a great resource for learning how to tell a story, how to tell a narrative from a first person perspective. Um, it's, it's spooky. It's scary at times. And I really, really, really have to highly recommend it. Um, yeah, no, there's, there's some good podcasts out there, and there's some really good podcasts out there. This this is a really good podcast. It, it doesn't start out with any stupid music. You don't hear a narrator telling you about what you're going to hear. You don't hear him address the audience ever. It's just the narrator, their story, and then it's done. If you're not paying attention you can have a couple episodes play, but they're about like hour long episodes. So if you're walking in a circle, another one will start. And if you're walking in a circle, really not paying attention, just kind of doing your thing for maybe a couple of hours. Ye and you've got like, kind of like, I don't know, half paying attention. Sometimes the stories will blend into each other. And then there's other times that it's like, wait a minute, is that from this story? Is that from that story? And then you have to go back and or I do at least when I'm walking around late at night, bleary eyed, unable to sleep because <sighs> sleep is stupid. I don't know if I've told you this or not. I hate sleeping. I hate sleeping and I hate, hate eating. Yes, I know. I am 
formerly a professional chef. I hate making food for myself. I love making food for other people and having people be like, here's money, make more food. But taking the time to eat, it's bullshit. I wish that there was some sort of pill that made it so I didn't have to eat or sleep that didn't make my teeth, ro teeth rot out. You know, because if, I, no, I'm not gonna do meth. I'm not gonna get hopped up on speed pills. But geez, if I could just cast off the shackles of humanity and never have to eat or sleep again and just work and do stuff and enjoy myself, that would be great. That would be the best. Huh. I wonder what it would be like if I never had to sleep again. I know, I'll write a short story about it, says every horror author ever. Seriously. <laughs> I, I, I feel like at some point in time, every horror author has been like, what would happen if I didn't have to sleep? Wait a minute, I got an idea. So, I guess I gotta wrap this up. I can't think of anything else to talk about other than, um, I don't know. Um, you can follow us on the Twitter at People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos. We're on Facebook now, and I was wrong about Facebook. I mean, yeah, Facebook is still a terrible, stupid thing that just wants your money and yeah but it's a great way to contact people and keep in touch with people so facebook um you can facebook me do you have a youtube that you want people to find out about and you want to talk to me about i'll check it out and if i like it i'll talk about it do you have a podcast you want me to check it out tell me about it i'll check it out and if i like it i'll talk about it have you written a book have you written short stories do you want people to buy your book or short stories? Here's what you do. This is a little bit more different. Don't send it to me. You can send me a free copy, and I will check it out. But what's best is if you get a microphone, don't use your computer. I don't want to hear it if it's just off your computer. Like, don't just use your built-in microphone on your computer. That's You might as well just get a, I don't know, a, one of those crummy old tape decks that talk into the speaker that's built into it that's garbage uh so record yourself uh, you know about two minutes talking about yourself two three minutes talking about the book and then maybe a couple of uh a couple of excerpts we'll uh we'll put it up on the show and then i'll tell people where they can find it that seems pretty cool to me that's that's free advertising if you have a paper that you've written that you want to read out loud and record it, send it in to me. I'll play it for you. If you have, like, short stories that you've written, a little audio play or something like that, I'll put it on. I, yeah. As long as it's uh, horror, mythosy, whatever, science fiction-y, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Uh, but I didn't write anything about H.P. Lovecraft, so what? I don't care. I wrote something about Frank Bell Nap Long. Even better. Hey, I've got something I wrote about Conan. Okay, fits. Boom. Uh, yeah. So, send stuff in. If you've got art, send it in. I'll put it up on all of the different stuff things that I do, all the different uh, social media. Uh, and heck, I'll even put it up on the YouTube. Hey, did you know that I'm on YouTube? Yeah, look for People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos on YouTube. You'll find uh, two podcasts, possibly three by the time this goes up. And you'll find some videos I took of the HPL Film Festival in Portland in 2008-2009. Probably end up doing one in 2015 since I've got this podcast now. So that's what month away oh man i don't have enough time for all the things i want i wish i didn't have to sleep and i wish that i could stop time all right 
Uh, where else can you find us? We are also, we've got a blog on the WordPress called People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos.wordpress.com. And then I've got this like depository of just random garbage on the internet called People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos.tumblr.com. Um, yeah, uh, everything from luchador stuff to Pokemon to Call of Cthulhu type stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's stupid. But go to pgttcm.podbean.com. That's pgttcm.pod, as in pod people, bean, as in bean, b-e-a-n, dot com, as in dot com, podbean, dot com, p-t-t-g-n, dot podbean, dot com. That, that I tell you this. This is kind of like the nexus point of all of the things. This is where my RSS feed comes out of, but it's also what hooks up to my Twitter and my Facebook and my YouTube and my iTunes and my Stitcher and my this and my that. This is everything. This is this is the all-in-one. This is the Yog sothoth of this. So thank you for listening. Man, is there anything I forgot to say? Uh yeah, probably that I was going to do a Ghostbusters episode, but I haven't been able to find my copy of Ghostbusters. And I don't want to pay money for a movie that I already own, so I'll do an episode of Ghostbusters when I find my copy of Ghostbusters. So I can go through and listen to all the audio options and listen to stuff. And then also make sure I have enough time to go back and listen to Mark Marin's interview with Ivan Reitman. And, you know, just, like, try and find anything about Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and everything else, any fun anecdotes, and really get a good Ghostbusters. And Ghostbusters would be the second part, like how I did, like, video games that I've been checking out and podcasts and that stuff like this. It'll just be Ghostbusters second half. First half? Don't know. Thinking about Shoggoths, but I talked about Shoggoths a bunch this time, so we'll figure out something. Maybe we'll go pre-Lovecraft, maybe we'll go after Lovecraft, maybe we'll go around Lovecraft's time, but I'm thinking maybe it'll be a book, maybe it'll be a creature, maybe it'll be a god. I don't know. I could talk about Golgoroth. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. This has been People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos. I have been your host, D.B. Spitzer. Thank you again for listening. Peace in the Middle East, war in the central core of the Earth. The Hollow Earth. Where the great race of Yith and the Elder Things and the Flying Polyps all fight against each other, against Nazi colonies and spacemen from space. That's my other podcast that doesn't exist yet. It's called Hollow Earth. And, uh... No, speaking of Hollow Earth, there's an amazing episode of Hollow Earth two-parter, as a matter of fact, on Blurry Photos, at Blurry underscore photos on the Twitter or Blurry Photos on the Facebook. I'm friends with them, podcast-wise. Like, I don't hang out with them in Chicago, but, you know, we're, like, podcasting buddies. Speaking of podcasting buddies, uh, an hour with your ex. It's a married couple talking about stuff that uh, they remember from their childhood, movie-wise, and other stuff like that. It's, uh, it's good. All right, well, I'm going to stop it before we get too long in the tooth here. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend, a great day. Hope you do something fun. Hope it's not too hot for you. And if you're listening to this on the bus, um, stomp your feet, clap your hands, tell the person next to you, People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos rocks. And if you're driving your car, honk your horn really loud. Um, Go honk, 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 honk. That's, I don't know, you know, that's that's useless. 
And if you're just walking around in an elevator, whatever, just press all the buttons and then get out. Okay, that's me. I'm done. Don't have anything else to say. Bye. People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos has been brought to people like you. People like you who listen to this. Let us know if you like it. Let us know if you don't like it. No, don't let us know about that. Our eagle, egos are way too fragile. Our eagles are way too fragile. Um, if you want to check out... Uh, Dark Cabinet. It's a book I have on Amazon.com. It's pretty awesome. You should check it out. It is, um, six dollars. Six dollars, and I get like two of those dollars to pump back into this. Also, I got stuff on Society6. Check it out.